Welcome back everyone. Today we're uh, really diving deep into a fascinating life. Yeah, this one's really something. Yeah, it's not every day we get to explore an emperor who is also, <laughs> get this, a philosopher. Right. Talk about a contrast. Marcus Aurelius, the philosopher emperor. It's kind of like, I don't know, finding a self-help book tucked into a suit of armor, you know. Exactly. And that's what we're going to uncover in this deep dive. How did this introspective guy end up ruling one of the most powerful empires in history? We've got his personal writings, historical accounts, the works. Oh, it's a wild ride, believe me. So let's jump right in. What kind of guy was Marcus Aurelius and how did his beliefs shape his decisions? Well, to understand Aurelius, we got to understand how emperors were, well, made back then. Okay, so not your typical line succession. Not even close. Adoption, my friend. Adoption. Hold on, we're not talking about the modern kind here, right? This sounds like <laughs> some Game of Thrones power play. You're not far off. It all started with Emperor Hadrian. Ah, Hadrian. A name that echoes through history. Right. So Hadrian, he handpicks Aurelius. But here's the catch. He does it indirectly. First, he adopts Antoninus Pius with one condition that Antoninus would adopt both Marcus Aurelius and D. Lucius Verus. Whoa, wait, so it's like a two-for-one adoption deal? Mm -hmm. With the future of the Roman Empire hanging in the balance? Talk about pressure. Imagine being Aurelius, just a teenager, and finding out you're basically being groomed to rule an empire, alongside your adopted brother, no less. And as if that wasn't enough, we can't forget about his marriage to Faustina the Younger, another power play orchestrated by, you guessed it, Antoninus Pius. Exactly. Every move calculated. It makes you wonder, when did Aurelius have time to even think about philosophy with all that going on? Right. Like, okay, got to secure the empire's future, maintain alliances. Oh, and by the way, find time for some deep thoughts about life and existence. Well, that's the fascinating part. It's in the midst of all this chaos that Aurelius finds solace in philosophy, specifically Stoicism. Stoicism. Now, we've all heard the term, but what does it really mean? And how did it resonate with a guy about to inherit, well, everything? Well, imagine, uh, imagine a philosophy that basically says, hey, focus on what you can control your thoughts, your actions. Okay, so far so good. Right. And don't sweat the stuff you can't. That's stoicism in a nutshell. Sounds very practical, uh -huh. especially for a future emperor facing you know, rebellions and invasions. Exactly. It's all about virtue, reason, and accepting fate's little curveballs. So did Stoicism offer like practical advice for ruling an empire? Or was it more about like Aurelius's personal growth? It's both, really. On a personal level, Stoicism helped Aurelius find that inner peace amidst all the craziness. Makes sense. Right. To accept what he couldn't change and just focus on being a good just ruler. Like a philosophical shield against the chaos. I like it. <laughs> Were there any particular thinkers or writings that really grabbed Aurelius? Oh, yeah, definitely. He was hugely influenced by Epictetus. Epictetus. Okay, another big name in Stoicism. What made him stand out? Epictetus was all about understanding our place in the universe, like recognizing there's a bigger picture, this force called Logos, a natural order to things. Logos. Uh, so almost like a cosmic blueprint. Exactly. And Aurelius really connected with that. Imagine the weight of the world literally on your shoulders and then finding comfort in this idea that there's an order to it all. It's like a superpower for dealing with imperial sized problems. But let's be real, not everyone in Aurelius's life was probably thrilled with his philosophical journey, right? Mm. Like imagine being his old tutor, watching your former student dive headfirst into stoicism. Talk about a philosophical curveball. You're so right. We actually have writings from Aurelius's former tutor, Fronto, a pretty respected scholar. Oh, he's got to hear. Right. And Fronto, he's totally skeptical about this whole stoicism thing. He sees it as too passive, you know, too accepting of hardship, especially for an emperor. It's like a philosophical showdown. The emperor and his stoic tutor. What happened? Do they actually like clash over this? Well, we don't have all the juicy details. It's clear Aurelius still really respected Fronto. I mean, he even gave him some pretty important positions later on, but at the end of the day, Aurelius stuck to his stoic guns. It shows how deeply these ideas resonated with him, even when challenged by someone he admired. It really makes you think about how those beliefs, instilled from a young age, actually played out once he became emperor. Did stoicism make him a better ruler? Or did it maybe hold him back in a world that was often brutal and unforgiving? That's the real question, isn't it? Did it help or hinder? I mean, it's easy to talk about inner peace and all when you're reading in your garden. Right. A little different when you're facing down, you know, plagues and invasions. Exactly. And Aurelius had his hands full, believe me. So how did he handle it? Like when things got really real, 
Did he live up to his stoic ideals? Well, look at his actions. Take the Antonine Plague, for example. This thing ravaged the empire for years. Millions dead, it would have been easy to just throw in the towel, you know? Especially for someone steeped in this idea of accepting fate. So what did he do? He acted. Instead of just accepting this horrible fate, he actually took charge. He set up measures to help the sick, got financial aid going, even postponed taxes to ease the burden on people. That's not exactly what I'd picture a accept everything philosophy looking like. Right. He used his stoicism to fuel his sense of duty, his compassion. It's actually pretty inspiring. Like finding a source of strength within, right? Okay, so plague, check. What about the whole, you know, leading an army into battle thing? Ah, uh, the Marcomannic Wars. Yeah, not exactly a peaceful stroll through the Forum. Aurelius, deep down, would have much rather been reading philosophy, we know that. But he understood what was at stake. Yeah. He stepped up, led his armies with, well, everything he had. It really adds another dimension to his writings, don't you think? Absolutely. This wasn't just theory for him. He was living it. Okay, so after diving into all this, what's the takeaway? Why should we you know, care about an emperor philosopher from centuries ago. Maybe it's that we can all strive for that wisdom, that virtue, even when everything's falling apart around us. Even now, right? Especially now. Focus on what we can control, act with integrity, try to make things a little bit better. Love it. So next time you're facing a challenge, remember Marcus Aurelius. Maybe channel a little stoicism, right? <laughs> act with purpose, live a life that reflects your own philosophy. Couldn't have said it better myself. This was amazing. Thanks for joining us, everyone, and we'll see you next time for another deep dive. In this grind called life, we hold our heads high. Through the stormy skies, we never say die. Facing every challenge like a stoic night. With every step forward, we ignite the night. Bounce back from the falls, never showing no fear. In the darkest moments, our minds stay clear. With a heart of iron and a steady aim, we charge through the pain, never seeking fame. Keep it moving, keep it strong Push it forward all day long So with courage, battle on Raise your voice and sing this song From the valleys low to the highest peaks We conquer the silence even when it speaks Life's battles rage on, we never shy away Standing firm in the fray each and every day Rhythm of resilience pounding in our chest Fighting every battle, never taking rest Stoic courage flowing in our veins Through the joy and through the pains Keep it moving, keep it strong Push it forward all day long Stoic courage battle on Raise your voice and sing this song From the falls, never showing no fear In the darkest moments, our minds stay clear With a heart of iron and a steady aim We charge through the pain, never seeking fame Keep it moving, keep it strong Push it forward all day long Stoic courage, battle on Raise your voice and sing this song Keep it moving, keep it strong other people now there's two kinds of people to learn from one is failures it's too bad failures don't give seminars right that would be valuable have them tell you how they lost it all and threw it all away threw their health away and threw their friendships away and things didn't work out well that would be valuable but now then we must also learn from positive people that have done well they've got the health and so we ask them how did you become so healthy they've got the skills so we ask them how did you become this skillful They've got the income, so we ask them, how did you get here in such a short period of time? So now, here's what's important in personal development. In learning from other people, we learn, number one, by observation. We learn what we see, we watch people that are successful in what they do. In sports, we watch their disciplines. In business, we watch their disciplines. Second, we learn by what we hear. Learn by listening. 
and then listen to the sermon on Sunday morning, listen to the lectures, listen to the teacher, listen to someone who's got something good to say. And then number three is vitally important on personal development, and that is read all the books, all the books you can possibly read in your lifetime. Mr. Shof got me started on my library. I've got one of the better libraries. And then I started keeping a journal. One of the major things my teacher taught me was to keep a journal. He said, don't trust your memory. If you hear something good, just make a little note and write it down. So I would suggest you do the same. Things that impress you, a poem that impresses you. Uh, when you attend a class, some of the ideas that impressed you, jot them down. If you read something in a magazine, write some ideas, take those out, put them in your journal, keep a good journal the rest of your life. This will serve you well. So I want the same thing to happen to you. Value captured that you can resort to later. Go back over it. The best way to keep one's word is not to give it. What people say about you is a projection of their own reality, not yours. The content of your character is your choice. Day by day, what you choose, what you think, and what you do, is who you become. Heraclitus In banquets, remember that you entertain two guests, body and soul. And whatever you shall have given to the body you soon eject, but what you shall have given to the soul, you keep always. There is no way to peace. Peace is the way. In the recognition of the self, all dualities disappear. Papaji. Loss and corruption is in very deed nothing else but change and alteration. And that is it which the nature of the universe doth most delight in, by which, and according to which, whatsoever is done, is well done. For that was the estate of worldly things from the beginning, and so shall it ever be. Or wouldest thou rather say, that all things in the world have gone ill from the beginning for so many ages, and shall ever go ill? And then among so many deities, could no divine power be found all this while, that could rectify the things of the world? Or is the world to incessant woes and miseries forever condemned? And the problem with some of you in this room, you don't have no drive. You ain't got nothing pushing you. You ain't got no reason for waking up in the morning. You ain't got no reason for pushing past that pain. You have no reason. You better find one before you get out of here today. You better go inside. You still looking outside for the stuff that's already inside. You still looking for someone to save you when you already your superhero. You looking for some information from somebody when you already got what you need in your head. It's just time for you to get up and be the best version of you. It's not an option. And the reason why some of you are not where you're supposed to be, you've given yourself an option. You've given yourself an out. You've given yourself an excuse. You've given yourself room not to do it, but you have what it takes. Give me some energy, I can. I, can. I, will. I will. I must. I must. Come on, I can. I can. Come on, I will. I, will. I, must. I must. I can. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go. I can means I have the ability to do it. I got what it take. I have the ability to do it. I will. I have the willpower to make it happen. I must. My wife needs me. I must. My son needs me. I must. My daughter needs me. We can, we will, and we must get through this. Let's go. I want to ask you a question. Seriously. This is going to be hard because some of you young and you like still worried about what people think about you so you don't want to be honest in front of people. 
want you to think about what level you want. Are you giving 90, 80, 70? Let's see what I'm saying for a minute. A ship in the harbor is safe, but that is not what ships are built for. Boastful speeches are the first sign of weakness, and those who are capable of great things keep their mouths shut. The greatest harm done to the body is not the pain, but the fear of pain. Plato underscores the importance of overcoming fear and confronting challenges, both physical and emotional, with courage. Resentment is like taking poison and waiting for the other person to die. Your past is a place to learn and grow, not a place to live. You can't make positive choices for the rest of your life without an environment that makes those choices easy, natural, and enjoyable. Deepak Chopra Mastery Self-mastery is a vital component of freedom. If you do not have mastery over yourself, you will never be truly free from conflict, dilemma, or self-doubt. Freedom and self-mastery allow you to be self-determining, which in turn empowers you to be the master of your own life, your own journey, and your own destiny. The skill of mastery gives you the ability to control your emotions, your perspectives and your reactions, while self-mastery makes it capable for you to determine your own actions and not allow external actions to control you. Learning how to be a master of your emotions frees you from negative mood dysregulation while increasing your ability to better manage your reactions and coping strategies. Self-mastery is seen as the final goal in living a stoic life. To have mastery over yourself is to truly know and accept the things you can and cannot control. And jobless people and, and there's a mean spirit against people that are down on their luck. For people now decide that regardless of what's going on in my life right now, there's something I can give. Regardless of what's going on, that I showed up to do something and I'm going to find a way to become of greater service to humanity and greater service to life. Now, what can you do, Les, when you have been telling yourself you can reach a goal and you've been affirming, I am abundant, I am rich, I feel better than good and better than most, I am blessed and highly favored, I can make it, I'm a winner, and you lose it every day. You reading all these prosperity books, you listening to all these tapes and, and it ain't happening. You wrote your goals down, you've been concentrating on these goals, you've been going out there and you have no money in your pocket. You're talking about, I'm a rich child of God. Your mind say, come on, give me a break. Who are you joking? What do you do when you've lost your spirit, you've lost your job, you lost everything, life been devastating. How do you do it? Come on, come on, be real, man. Come on, get a life. You can't do that. You can't come back from that. Come on. How do you do that? Here's something that Larry D'Angelo wrote. He said, Life is like a grindstone. It can polish you or it can pulverize you, depending on how you position yourself. Think about this goal you have. I want you to think about it hard. Because here's what happened to that man that closed himself into the garage. He didn't believe this. This is some place that you can always retreat to and be in contact.